Hello again and welcome back. In this video, we'll use Flow Designer to create a uh, flow to process an inbound email. So it's kind of the modern day equivalent to inbound actions that we've played with before. For that, we'll be adding a new property, uh, which for me wasn't there out of the box and I had to add it in. Um, definitely explains a few gaps. So stick around and we'll see that too. But before we get started, um, and if you are new around here and haven't yet subscribed, Please, please consider subscribing, um, smash the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video just like this one. So enough YouTube babble, let's get on with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a flow. Um, it's gonna process an email that's coming into the system. Uh, we're gonna use an inbound um, email trigger and we're gonna create an incident. We're gonna keep it really, really simple, okay? Um, so let's go for it. So we go to Trusty Flow Designer, which we've played with multiple times before. Uh, we're going to create a new flow. And we're going to simply call it Test Inbound Email Incident. Okay. Run as, I'm going to pick System User. So if I was to leave that as the user who initiates, this would kick off the flow um, from um, using, sorry, using the person that sent in the email. So if I was going to do some really funky stuff in the flow, um, I don't know, uh, go and query some obscure record types, change, release. They're, they're not obscure, but the only ones I can think of. But if we're going to run queries on that, that would mean the user who initiates that session must have permissions to do that, right? So I'm going to select system user. We go submit, we'll go to our trigger. And we're going to go to inbound email. And we're going to go to, where are we? Receive type. The receive type is new. So if you've played around with inbound actions um, before, this should be kind of familiar now. We're in familiar territory. But because we're going to create a new um, ticket or a, a, a new um, incident, sorry, and it's not from a forward or a reply, we're going to go for new. It's new coming in. And we're going to keep it really simple. We're going to say subject contains test, right? Exciting stuff. We're going to keep it like that. There's a few, I mean, let's just have a look. There's a few more attributes that we can play with. So we've got body, body text. So body, that's um, HTML. Body text is 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 not. <laughs> uh, we've got some other stuff, stuff that we can play with. Okay, but we'll keep it really simple. The reply record type, what's that? We're not going to populate that. But if we were to pick receive type is reply, so we're replying to um, an email that's already been sent out, we might want to put in the record that um, it came from and therefore we want to attach back up to, right? So incident. So as we're not doing that, I'm going to keep it as new, not bother. Okay, keep it really, really simple. Um, I'm going to go for create record. Again, this is just to illustrate how easy this is for you. Um, and then we can go, you know, you, you can, you can probably go to town on, um, on this and make it as, as, um, as technical as you like, as you want to really, um, add more, more stuff into it. But I'm just about showing you how to the basics and letting you explore. And I think that's most of the fun to be honest. So when we create an incident, we're going to set a caller. We're going to set caller is equal to. So trigger the inbound email is equal to the user record. So that's one way you can add it. We're going to say the short description is, we can come over here now, look, the same as the subject. It's the same thing. I'm just doing it two different ways just to show you that we can add um, the pills in a different way. And we're going to add some work notes. And the work notes are going to be the body text. If we wanted to, we could strip out specific information from the subject. Um, they've got this new, um, and I did a video on this um, before, but they've got this little function, um, what, dot circle function thing on the pill. If you click it, you've got some kind of um, some tools that you can manipulate um, the information in that pill with. So, you know, go, go ahead, check it out. Um, we're not going to, we're just going to do a straight map. So all we've done here is we've, said an email's coming in, this um, email flow is going to trigger 
and it's going to create an instant record. Really, really simple. So we click save and we're going to activate that. And I'm going to go and send something in. So if I go over to my email account, this is the, um, the instance we're using. Would I say it contains test? Or should we just go, this is a test. This is a test body. And let's send that in. Okay. So that will be um, now coming into the, the, the system. So and uh, now um, I guess we just wait. I think while we're waiting, actually, the one thing I do want to point out is this is on my PDI instance, right? What I did have um, issues with, and I'm just going to draw your attention to this, is I did have issues with this here, email receiving enabled. Um, just be aware that if you enable that on your PDI instance, you'll be able to receive emails in so you can test stuff. But the service now do go in and check and unflag it. So if you've sent an email and you've sat around for 15, 20 minutes and nothing's come in, go and check it again because it, it seems like there's either some auto process where they uncheck it or someone sat there um, looking at PDIs, which I doubt it, um, disabling this. Um, pretty annoying, to be honest with you. If you want to test stuff out, I kind of understand why they're doing it, but... I guess if anyone from ServiceNow is actually listening to this, if you're taking the time out to listen to this, I don't know. Please, please do something to make life easier for a, for a dev, just to test and play around with stuff. Or um, maybe flag something up that's going to say, hey, you've got five minutes or ten minutes or something. Put a timer on I, I don't know. Do something. Make it easy. Anyway, just watch that, though, guys. If you're playing around with this, watch out for that. Um, while we're waiting for the email to come in, what I'm also going to show you is just look at the inbound action. Okay, so if we look at email um, inbound actions, let's go to here. We'll look at, um, where's the incident table? Incident. And we'll look at create incident here. So this is kind of what we've just done on Flow. We've we've defined um, the type as new. We've put in a subject. You know, arguably, we didn't really need to do that. Um and we've 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 given it we've given it some actions to take when it comes in. So you know we could have had more stuff in, but this is where we've we've come from in terms of configuration of the tool. Um, and this is kind of where we're going. Um, now, one of the questions I had, and I, I think we should answer this, is that's all very well. So you've got inbound actions, which I'm going to refer to as legacy, right? Uh, perhaps not, but just just excuse me for that one, right? And then you've got inbound email flows. So which one do you use, right? Because these these inbound actions, they're not just going to go over away, um, away overnight. And there's twenty of them. So do you do you you know do you do you have a project where you convert all these across to these, or do you run them side by side? And if you've got any more inbound actions that you need to do for incident, for example, and you don't want to convert them. Can you run them side by side on the same table? So can I have, uh, you know, some inbound actions um, for incident operating at the same time as flow? And if I can, then which one takes precedent? Well, I can tell you the execution order um, is that inbound email flows will take a higher precedent, so they're going to run first. Um, and if a condition is met that that ensures that that flow is run, then it will kind of stop stop processing. The other thing that I found out that I want to draw your attention to is, well, okay, that's great, but in email actions, Russ, we get execution order. So I can say, uh, you know, which which inbound action is going to run first. But did I see that on Flow? Flow? I didn't see anything on Flow. There was no execution order. There's no property that I can play with. Um, so how do I do that? That is where this property comes in. Okay, so let's just go to properties and then we'll go and check the emails coming. Um, here we go. This property here. And again, this was not on my instance. I had to add this in. Okay, so I'll just hold it on their screen just in case. And I'm going to put it in the description as well in case we ever need to find it. 
And in case I forget, and I need to look back at this video sometime in the future and, uh, and remember what I did. But I added that, put it as false. Now, when we turn that to true, just over here, look, here we go. It's before, we'll turn that to true, reload, bit of a drum roll. Some interlude music, maybe, again. <laughs> right, we go here. Now look, now we've got this order. Now we can put an order on it. Now we can do stop processing. So see how that defaulted to stop processing? What if I didn't want to stop processing? So you enable that property, you can add an order, stop processing. Pretty sneaky, because yeah, it took me a while to figure that out. So I was thinking, well, you know, what if I want to change the order? What if I want it to run in a different order? Anyway. Let's go and see if our uh, emails come in and it's been processed. We can go over here, have a quick look at the executions. We can see here our flow has been executed. It's complete. We won't muck about. We'll come over to here. We'll go to look at incidents. Open. Ah, here we go. This one here, caller, service nerd. That's me. Short description, this is a test. That was the email subject and the work notes. This is a test body. Okay, brilliant. Um, excellent. So uh, we, the flow that we've set up in Flow Designer um, has been triggered based on the conditions that we set in, um, contains tests, and it's created a record. Now, of course, you could take this a, a lot further. We, you know, Hopefully you know that. You could put in a receive type. Um, and make it reply. And you could do a query to check the user actually exists um, before updating the record. If it was a reply, you would perhaps need to do a, a record lockup. So you'd need to get the record from maybe the subject. So you'd need to, to use one of those um, functions I, I mentioned on the data pills to perhaps extract the incident number from the subject, do a data lookup and update it. Perhaps I'll do another another video on that because that would be useful. But I want to just talk you through um, how to create it, how easy and simple it is. It's quite intuitive, but I, I kind of wanted that discussion or at least mention those those um, points around how do you run this alongside um, inbound action? Is it a project to migrate across? Can they live in um, you know in harmony together? And I think that there's, I think it's probably the latter, to be honest with you. But I think you've got to have some architectural thought in terms of how you're going to do that. Um, and, you know, any developers working on your instance, you've got to make sure you're all aware what's your default um, and come up some, with some policy and some guidelines around that. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful. Um, if there's anything you want me to expand on, go to different topics. If there's anything you actually want me to cover, um, drop some comments in. I've had some great comments um, around uh, fr from people so far that give me some good ideas. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Um, keep an eye out for the next videos. Hopefully I'll be posting um, more and more in future. There will be a my top five, maybe 10 um, of San Diego. I've been releasing little snippets, um, but that will be coming. So keep your eye out for that. Hope you've enjoyed it and have a great week ahead, guys. And I'll um, see you soon. Cheers.